Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's Expresso right here on SABC3. Now, it is Tuesday, so we need to catch up with our medical expert once again. New research shows that about 10% of people will suffer from the itchy skin condition known as eczema at some point in their lives. Now, according to a study conducted at the University of South California School of Medicine, even for people with mild eczema, nearly 18% said they avoided socializing because of their appearance, while 23% said they limited their daily activities. Yeah, now eczema is more than just skin deep. It's a chronic skin condition that may interfere with a patient's quality of life and overall health, both physically and mentally. And here to help us unpack the causes and symptoms of the skin condition is, of course, our trusted medical professional, Dr. Darren Green. Always great to have you uh, with, with your time and expertise, sir. So let's start first by defining what is eczema. Let's talk about what it is. Yeah, the, the official term that we use is atopic dermatitis and atopia is not a place it just refers to a <laughs> collection of 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 uh, conditions that are associated with a hypersensitive immune system to different triggers mm -hmm. and with eczema this inflammation it's basically an inflammatory patch yeah. of skin and it has various types various triggers it occurs uh, typically all over the body but mm -hmm. uh, interesting to find in near the creases on the wrists for example uh, behind the neck, yes. above the, the eyebrows, behind the knees. Mm. It typically starts in those areas. Also, perhaps because it's very hot there, and that's where you often have a bit of uh, increased body temperature that irritates it and mm -hmm. makes it more red, yeah. inflamed and itchy. Yeah. So that uh, inflammation of the skin can have a, a spectrum of mm. clinical presentation yeah. uh, that mimics a lot of other conditions as well. So very interesting to take a thorough history, a good history, and examine the person properly and then find out exactly what the progression of those lesions have been and so forth. But primarily affects the skin <clears throat> and has an array, as I say, of, of faces. Well, what exactly causes it, though? Yeah, so your body has, a, has an inflammatory response. Yeah. In other words, it's reacting to something in an over-eager way where you deposit too much... Uh, just like in allergies, for yeah. example, where you deposit too much histamine and inflammatory uh, mediated substances or chemicals under the skin in those areas. So an overactive immune system, uh, uh, definitely, uh, in terms of uh, your allergic response. So allergies being the biggest one, yeah. and atopia meaning an allergic type of eczema. Yeah. You yeah. do get other types of dermatitis, inflammation, yes. uh, like contact from washing your, the dishes, from uh, touching things, for example, brushing up even against mohair in some cases. Yeah. But the most common ones are food irritants, obviously, and food associated, obviously, with our diets. And then you have things like house dust mite, mm -hmm. very big pollen, oh, uh, wow. things in the environment, and then genetically, very interesting to note that if both your parents suffer from eczema, uh, you've got an eight, 8 in 10 chance of oh, having wow. eczema yourself. If one parent suffers, you've got a 6 in 10 chance of, of wow. developing eczema. So yeah. definitely a very strong genetic component yeah. to inheriting the condition. So as you said, it can present in uh, various ways, or degrees. Yeah. Or degrees. So uh, what, what are the symptoms you identify to let you know that this is actually eczema and not something else? Good. So uh, itchy red patch first. So the skin can become uh, itchy and irritable, basically. You see that lady scratching her legs. But generally the lesion will be a, a well circumscribed patch that's flat and red uh, and then starts to itch as well. Mm. Flakiness is not necessarily... Uh, the way that eczema obviously ca uh, presents. Remember that uh, other conditions that cause silvery flakes on the skin, like psoriasis, for example, yeah. also chronic inflammatory conditions, those pa patches seem to be a lot more raised uh, and can be quite, quite uh, difficult to treat and take a longer time to heal. Yeah. But uh, certainly, if you don't remove the triggers to the eczema, you ain't going to remove the eczema. Wow. Yeah, that itch is going to be there for sure. a long time. Yeah. Talking about the itch, I want to know from Dr. Darren Green after this, how does one reduce that trademark itch that mm. comes with eczema? We'll catch up with him after this. Like this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you can make my day. Yeah, oh, green I, plates I want and clear some of that. The okay. shakshuka. Yes, I green love a shakshuka. I'm here for a shakshuka. Mm. Well, I'm also here for the fact that we are talking about mm. eczema today. And like I said, I wanted to know, how does one reduce that trademark itch that comes with eczema, Dr. Darren Green? Because I think yeah. that is by far maybe the most troubling part of having I mean, it. In Other the than, moment, right? Yeah, there, it's it having that. Because you're not supposed to And it's to so nice it. as well. 
when you when you scratch it, it's to like relieve oh. it. <laughs> yes, but then it, it obviously yeah. worsens. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like mozzie bars. People more take their nail pain. and dig it into oh. the mozzie bar to stop the itch because they don't want to scratch it. I know it. some people take a fork. Oh my goodness! No, so to, so the itch is caused by the histamine release under the skin, and, and that collection of histamine causes the itchiness. So that gives you then all that inflammatory redness, the raised skin, the itchiness, and so forth. So one thing that does help is colds that people don't think about typically. Cold, taking something ice cold. Oh, like cold. Cold, okay, like a okay. cold uh, face cloth, like a uh, some ice. Just, phew, instead of scratching it, breaking yeah. the barrier of the skin okay. even further, that lays it vulnerable to secondary infections from your nails particularly, and then getting a bacteria in the, in the actual oh, wound. Wow. Mm. Uh, actually putting some ice packs on it, or okay. cold. Firstly, before we've even got into any medication, mm -hmm. you do get antihistamine topicals, emollients, which are moisturizers and creams to help with the dryness, the scaliness and so forth. But the antihistamines obviously help with reducing the amount of histamine mm -hmm. in the skin. Sometimes people will use a steroid-based cream, corticosteroids, which will also reduce the inflammation and help. But they act over a longer period of time. They're not there for the within-the-minute kind of yeah. relief. In the minute, try the, the temperature control and try the antihistamines, yeah. both uh, orally and topically. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, there's a lot to say about where a lot of research is going in eczema. There's a lot of work being done out there yeah. for new uh, developments where they're looking at steroid-free preparations in terms of treating eczema because the side effects of using steroids long-term on skin aren't great. I mean, you get thinning of the skin, mm. changing of the epidermis and the mucosa as well, um, and also absorbing steroids into the bloodstream do have an effect systemically on the body. Yeah. It sounds like such a difficult condition to, to work around because of the complexities, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming from a medical point of view, but can it be cured or outgrown? You said it's certainly. a genetic thing. Yes, certainly. You'll find a lot of people typically present in childhood with the condition, but do outgrow it. I mean, uh, all of us have memories of someone in our family or at yeah. school that perhaps had, uh, had eczema. Um, and then, obviously, it can improve over time because you kind of become desensitized to the mm. environment and the triggers and the pollutants, the pollen, where you're living, uh, the, the irritants. And then your diet, you start learning, uh, you know, and you can even go to go for specific tests with an allergy specialist regarding which foodstuffs actually trigger the allergies. Yeah. The big ones are things like cheese, like, uh, you know, eggs, like nuts, yeah. dairy for some people yeah. as well. And then, obviously, the... the, the contact things like your house dust mite from your mattress and your pillows etc yes. at home so a lot and difficult because the social implications of the condition are are dire yeah. parents are ashamed yeah, because understand. what are the other parents going to think about my yeah. child's yeah. red uh, flaky skin why is, he, why is your child rash? itching don't yeah. you give them a bath and is it in is, hygiene then gets questioned and eczema has nothing to do with hygiene yeah. good hygiene will help treat eczema you know and prevent secondary infection yeah. but it doesn't cause eczema yeah. uh, and and so certainly too the the notion that it's infectious and yeah. that if you touch someone with yeah. it you can spread it i mean we mm. had that exactly when i was in primary school we had uh, you know one of our um, other learners who had eczema and we didn't know what it was and so we avoided the girl not knowing that it actually it was not you can't An get it disease, but yeah. infectious and then Later on in life, she just outgrew it. Yeah. And she was like the go. most gorgeous girl. But it was um, a beautiful skin. Um, exactly. Oh, I was like, wow. Out. But when I come back, I want to talk about prevention. Sure. And I also want to talk about diet Great. when it comes to eczema. All that more with our medical expert, Dr. Darren Green, after this. Welcome back to your feel good breakfast show. Oh, man. The <laughs> The ad break conversations are colorful, I can tell you that. But uh, we are focusing right now on eczema. That is our medical topic for the day with Dr. Darren Green. And uh, we've found out quite a lot so far yeah. about what, it, what causes it, what are the symptoms that present that can then show you or indicate mm -hmm. to you that it is eczema and not another um, atopia yeah. uh, condition. Uh, we've got Sandra on the line right now who's given us a call on 0214309881. Good morning, Sandra. Good morning. How Great. are you? Uh, very, very well. Thanks for the call. Uh, what is your question or comment? My question is basically, I've struggled for about three or four years where my one underarm, I usually get the eczema, which is caused apparently by stress, which I've changed a lot of things and I'm in um, antibiotics, but it still doesn't go away. So I'm having the issue where I am using E45 cream, I've tried Metaspore and at the stage it gets worse with the heat. So I'd like to know, is it eczema or is it more allergy? Okay, 
Thank you yeah. so much for that question. All right. Yeah, so understanding her question, is it eczema or is it allergy? Remember, eczema, one of the main cause of eczema is allergies or yes. atopia. It yeah. refers to having an allergic profile. So uh, in this case, obviously, she could be allergic to one of the contact antiperspirant deodorants she's using. If it's under the arm specifically, uh, one has to go and look at what are the possible chemical irritants that could be causing this. Mm -hmm. And they're often preservatives. Uh, you'll find a lot of aluminium or silver in the underarm uh, preparations. You get gel sticks, you get the roll-ons, etc., etc. And there are many different chemicals in that that could possibly be causing the skin reaction. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, you find a lot of ladies shave under their arms as well, which, which also make the skin a little bit... Uh, Irritates the skin. ...irritated and, and also more exposed to the environment. Also, your clothing type and the temperature if it's really hot, and that's why eczema occurs typically in the creases in mm -hmm. hot places. Yeah. <clears throat> so you can imagine then that that would be a place that, you know, is inflamed quite quickly. Cotton is wonderful in the sense yeah. of its temperature control mm -hmm. in terms of material. A lot of the synthetic fibres don't breathe. So you have then increased body temperature, increased sweat rates in those areas, and that leads then to irritable skin. Chafing can often be the initial thing that happens with clothing, just an uncomfortable seam in the wrong place. <laughs> can start a process. Wow. But remember, in this case, if it's so chronic, one would want to go and look at uh, other possible triggers as well. Yeah. So start with the chemical stuff that you're actually applying in that area, and then take it back to food, diets, uh, look at family histories. You yeah. might get a clue as to someone else in your family that had an sure. allergy yeah. as well. So yes. I have a quick question. Yeah. She mentioned stress. Yes, so Is stress, that... if you think about stress, how do we counter stress in our human bodies? Your body manufactures cortisone or cortisol, which is the anti-stress uh, hormone. And uh, that obviously controls then degrees of inflammation in the human body and helps with that. So stress affects the immune system and can affect your immune system in terms of whether you are at a strong place, ready to fight an opportunistic <coughs> infection. And when you don't uh, sleep and you run down and not eating properly, what happens to your lips? What do you find on the lips? Cold sores. Yeah. Because then the viruses that are laying there, and herpes virus typically is one of them, not the sexual one, the one that occurs and causes yeah. fever blisters, yes. it activates. So these viruses can lay dormant in your system and when you sure. immunosuppressed, yeah. they then come to the fore. So stress is definitely something that leads to many types of skin conditions and obviously dermatitis is just one of them. Sure. All right, great stuff. What a call. Thank you definitely. very much for that. Thank you so uh, we're gonna much. keep those lines open zero two one four three zero nine double eight one and we'll be back with Dr. Darren Green quite shortly. We'll yes. be catching up with our Dr. Darren Green one more time as we discuss everything about eczema. I wanted to know, is it preventable, Dr. Darren Green? If you're genetically predisposed to it, no. You're not okay. going to know that you have it yeah. until you've already been exposed to some or other trigger that actually causes the manifestation. Yeah. So uh, in terms of that, interesting, the research uh, regarding your question, uh, yeah. regarding when you're pregnant uh, as well, what you consume and what you eat and how that affects the immunity of your, really? of, your, of your baby or your immune system and allergy yeah. profile. Also, the food that you introduce to a newborn. Yes. At what stage you introduce them to uh, eggs, peanuts, and so, you know, with the knowledge of a family history of peanut allergy, for example, mm. when the right time is to actually introduce them can also play a role in whether they actually develop sensitivity to it or not. Okay. So very useful to speak to an expert that works in the field and you get what's called an allergologist. <laughs> That's an actual profession. <laughs> so you find a lot of pediatric, uh, well, not a lot of them, very few actually. Uh, we're privileged to have, I think, two of the best in the world right here in Cape Town. Wow. Uh, so wonderful through the Allergy Institute mm -hmm. uh, at the UCT Lung Institute um, and at Red Cross Hospital as well. So wow. we're very privileged. So we need to obviously consult those people. And yeah. they can help you not waste a lot of money on unnecessary yes. tests mm -hmm. um, that someone that doesn't work in the field every day works with uh, and then, you know, re requests unnecessary tests yeah. to get to the bottom of the problem. Yeah. So, yeah. We've got a caller on the line. Lily is on the line from <laughs> Durban. Good morning, Lily. Good morning to you and compliments of the season to you all, guys. <laughs> I'm compli compli. Good morning, Lily. <laughs> I'm so glad I can speak to you all 2019. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to have you on the phone. I love your smile. Yes, Listen, uh, let's let's hear you out. What do you what do you have to say? Morning, Doctor. Good morning. Uh, Good morning. Uh, the boys went for a holiday, you know, December, mm -hmm. and they came back with this rash, and it's like water pimples. Ooh. Yes. Yeah. Like Some on the on the arms and the fingers between the fingers. Oh, 
Mm. What? How can I treat that? All right. Yeah. So water pimple, she means. Obviously, it's difficult. We're not seeing the rash. Yes. Yeah. So I think when we when you speak about waterfall blisters or, or skin rashes, a few things come to mind. The first one is obviously chicken pox, which is highly, highly. Uh, contagious and happens in small kids, particularly if they haven't had their, uh, you know, if they're underage for their vaccinations yes, as well. Yes. And it's a disease often that we see in childhood, and once you've had it, your body develops immunity to it. Okay. So, waterfall blisters, obviously, that being right at the top of the list, different stages, some of them will dry out and form crusts, and they're very itchy, mm. and it can eventually cover the arms and the legs and eventually the whole body. But when, when you come back from a holiday in, a, in older children and that happens, you've got to go and look at what they've been exposed to. You've got to mm. look at whether they were exposed to a certain sun cream on holiday, yeah. whether they swam in specific rivers, yeah. where did they swim, whether it's, was it still standing water, was it seawater, etc. And then yeah. also go and look for associations in the environment. So, yeah, one would have to then go through a process of uh, elimination going through that. Mm -hmm. But the most important, are the kids well? What, do they have any fever? Are they systemically yeah. unwell? Yes. Have they got good appetite? Are they ingesting water, etc., uh, etc.? Et one would want to look at all that first. So I'd recommend that they have it checked out, especially if it's a water-filled lesion, not a common thing, and one would have to go and look at it. Fantastic. Thank you so much for that call, Lily. Thanks, we do appreciate it um, very much. I do believe we have one more uh, chat. Was that the last one? That, that was the last one. one. That's that always so sad when we get to this point. That was like we could just speak for hours and hours on these things. But as always, we can follow you on social media yeah. at Dr. Darren Green or Dr. Darren Green. Thank and you. Uh, you engage. Thank you very, very much for always Thank being you. there to be a helpful expert to talk to all things medical.